What is a sewer lateral and, and, and what is a sewer lateral inspection? What does that entail? This is that it's the pipe that's outside of the building that connects the building drain to the city sewer connection. Here's the reason why that's important. That's just the pipe outside of the house. But the problem with that is, is if you're a prospective buyer, you still have the pipe under the house to take care of. That's the building drain. It's literally, it's the same pipe. The only difference is the location of it. But by legal definition, it is different. Hey everybody, how's it going? Jason Walters here. Thank you for joining us. And on today's video, we have with us here, Ben Cohn. He is the owner of From Sinks to Sewers. And he's gonna to talk to us today about the importance of getting a sewer lateral inspection. What's up, Ben? Thanks for joining us. How are you doing? Oh, hey, Jason, about the same. Thanks for having me. Hey, man, th thanks, for, thanks for joining me, man. I appreciate it. I know you're a busy man. Um, so tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us about your company. And uh, what do you do? So business started back in 2010. And during that time, I was currently in the Navy. And then, uh, so I was licensed here in California, 2012. I separated honorable discharge out of the Navy. And I started doing plumbing. Well, in 2014, City of Ventura put out an ordinance that stated whenever you sell your home, you have to have a sewer lateral inspection done. And it was tied into real estate sales. So what ended up happening was is that I started meeting more and more realtors. And then slowly I started migrating away from regular types of plumbing. And then I started focusing on the sewer inspection work. And then probably, I want to say it was maybe about four years ago, four or five years ago, I just said, you know what, I'm not going to do repairs anymore. I just started to talking to the realtors, talking to the homeowners. They, everyone felt that it was just so much nicer to know that I was just doing the inspection. I wasn't doing the repair. And so I started to just kind of gear my um, my business model towards that route. And that's what I've been doing ever since. Serving, I work here in Ventura, work all over Ventura, uh, Ventura County. And mostly what I focus on is uh, sewer inspection work and drain cleaning. And the thing is about it is that I really don't advertise. So the only way to know me is to know someone who knows me. Um, I just really, it's all word of mouth. No, I love that. Well, if you're a real estate agent in Ventura County, you know, Ben, you know, Ben is doing all the sewer inspections around here. I mean, he does 100% of mine and, um, tell us, tell us about that Ventura city ordinance. I mean, that is, you know, the number one reason that I would assume, you know, most agents are, are calling you uh, when they have a transaction in the city of Ventura, you're getting called nine times out of 10, right? Jason, you're too nice. But I just got to keep you honest here. <laughs> I'd like for it to say be nine out of ten, but truthfully, no. Okay, yeah, sure, I dominate the market, but no, not really. But I do have a good portion of realtors that trust me. Biggest reason why is is that the realtors who call me is is that their number one priority is trusted and protection of their clients. It's not price. But then there are other realtors who just say, "Look, we want the bottom dollar. What is the low price?" But that's really getting off subject. So the PSO ordinance for Ventura, when that first started, what ended up happening is I would have realtors who would just talk to me and they're like, you're gonna kill the deal, you're gonna kill the deal. And now what ended up happening was is that they saw the value in getting the sewer inspection done because it was lowering liability for everybody. And sometimes, yeah, it did expose problems that people didn't anticipate, but that was done during the contingency period when negotiations were still open. These problems mm -hmm. weren't being found after the fact, after the uh, close of the home. And so what was happening was, is that the same realtors who were telling me, hey, you're going to kill the deal, were now the realtors who were saying, hey, I'm working in Camarillo and I have a listing and it's not required there, but I want you to do the inspection anyway. And maybe it was bad for me in one situation, you know, maybe I was representing the buyer or the seller, but on this different one, you know, now I'm representing the buyer and I want to have one done because I saw the value of it. And that's really where it kind of spread. Um, and as far as why is Ventura having one, uh, why does Ventura have one? It's a two part thing. Um, short answer is, is that there was, a, there was a lawsuit involved with the amount of bacteria in our ocean ways. And the second thing is, is that President Obama, he signed the EPA Clean Water Act. And there was a lot of things involved with that. It wasn't just Ventura, but basically it said, America, clean up your local waterways. 
And what people don't understand is, is that when a um, when you flush your toilet, it reaches the sewer plant. But in times of heavy rain, what happens is, is that water comes into the sewer into the sewer pipes, and they go into the processing plant. Now this processing plant is not able to handle the excess flow. So anything excess, it just sends over the side, and it all goes downstream into the local river or lake or local beaches. And this is a big reason why during times of heavy rain, they always say, hey, don't go swimming in the local air, in, in the local waterways, right? So a lot of people are under the assumption the biggest problem is sewage going into the ground. And that's just not true. The bigger problem is groundwater coming into the sewer pipes. That's the big issue. And that's the reason why things are getting, um, why some areas like Ojai require uh, roots to be a permanent repair. You can't just remove the roots and call it good. You actually have to make a permanent fix because they have a higher ground uh, groundwater table. And so if there's any water coming in, it's going to overfill their, their sewer plant to capacity. Satakoy has this problem. Uh, there's a lot of areas that have this problem. And so here what they said was local cities, local ordinances, you guys all figure it out on what makes sense for you. And Ventura came out with a program that says there might be some costs that affect the homeowner. How do we lessen that impact? We'll tie it into home sales. Um, and so that's what I've seen. Well, well, thanks, man. I didn't know all that. It's kind of, uh, kind of gross. <laughs> <laughs> it's something you never think about, right? Nobody ever no, thinks no. about it. No, no. But it's I so try important. not to think about it. Right? <laughs> Well, that shows that things are working right, you know? Right. That's, that's crazy, man. <laughs> well, yeah. before we get any further, man, why don't you tell everybody, like, what is a sewer lateral and, and, and what is a sewer lateral inspection? What does that entail? Okay, so sewer lateral inspection. So the definition of it is, is that it's the pipe that's outside of the building that connects the building drain to the city sewer connection. Here's the reason why that's important. That's just the pipe outside of the house. That's all it is. And so for Ventura, it's the listing side. It's uh, the current homeowner who is providing that sewer inspection, that uh, sewer lateral inspection to the buyer. So all they're trying to do is come into compliance. But the problem with that is, is if you're a prospective buyer, you still have the pipe under the house to take care of. That's the building drain. It's literally, it's the same pipe. The only difference is the location of it. But by legal definition, it is different. And I have had times when people have said, hey, I had a sewer lateral inspection done, but pipe still backed up. And it was like, yeah, but the pipe backed up in the building drain. Well, why wasn't that mm -hmm. checked? And it was because, well, you didn't ask. You asked for a sewer lateral inspection. This is one of these things where it's so important. You, and you know, you're a good negotiator. You're a really good negotiator. But it, this is why it's so important when it comes to negotiation. What are you actually negotiating and asking for? And you have to understand these terms. And so if you ask for, you know, if you're representing the buyer and you say, I want a sewer lateral inspection, you're not really representing or protecting your client well because you still have the building drain, which is the pipe under the building that can be affected as well. So uh, that's really hmm. something to think about when calling in for these inspections. Now, what is it exactly? So... It's basically a, um, uh, I have a camera. It's on the end of a long push rod and it just goes down the sewer line. And I just note the condition of it. Uh, I just say what it is. Now, one of the things is, is that for myself, uh, this is something for, that's important for the viewer to understand is, is that as a sewer inspector, I'm give out a recommendation. I'm not telling anybody what to do. People, my recommendation can be ignored or it could be taken uh, as it says, or it could be taken to a bigger extreme. And, and here's what I mean by that. If I see roots in the sewer line, I might tell someone I recommend, you know, I'll clean the pipe at the time of the inspection as part of my service. That's done at no additional fee. And then I might say, have the roots cleaned out every three to five years, I'll also provide a two year warranty. However, mm -hmm. here's the problem with that. What if the home, and this has actually happened. I've actually, I've had homeowners who say, no, we don't like that. Okay. We came from a house that had roots all the time and we don't want roots in our new sewer line. 
So we want to get it permanently fixed. And I could tell people, look, that's okay. That's your pers that is your perspective. And if that's what's important to you, then by all means, negotiate on that. Something that's a, that I feel that's important personally is I try not to tell what people's perspective should be. Tell them what their perspective should be. I believe that's based off of people's experiences. And I provide that information. I could tell you, what would I tell a family member? But beyond that, I believe it's for the individual to decide their comfort level, because ultimately, they're the ones who are going to have to live with that decision. But they need to know at the end of the day, what are they buying for the house? You know, th that's a huge investment, biggest investment most people will ever make. And they just need to be aware of these things. So what are you really getting? And that's what I try to convey to the client. That's awesome, man. There's a lot of good information. I mean, I've, I've ordered a ton of inspections from you, and you're, you're, you're here teaching me stuff still. <laughs> Jason, you're too nice, man. You're seriously. <laughs> yeah. um, so, okay, so Ventura requires that you have a, a sewer lateral inspection within the last 10 years on file, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and are there any other cities in Ventura County that this is a requirement, or is it just Ventura? So, yes. So, like, Satikoy has its own ordinance, and and there's all kinds of different what-ifs, right? But Satikoy has one. Ojai Sanitation has one. So now, clarify Ojai Sanitation. That is not the city of Ojai. That is the Ojai Valley Sanitation Department. And so that serves even all the way down to Ventura address. So if, uh, if you're on the 33 north of Shell Road, there's a small area and, and there's a small track in there, but you have a Ventura address, but you're actually being served by the Ojai Valley Sanitation Department. Reason why a lot okay. of people don't realize that is because you pay Ojai Valley Sanitation through your property tax. And so you have to be aware that what Ojai, what Ojai Valley Sanitation requires and what Ventura requires are two different things. And and realtors negotiate them and treat them in two different ways. Okay, great. And there's a lot of what there's a lot of what ifs. And what I generally tell people is, is that if you have a transaction or if you have something that's coming up in this area, just give me a call and then I can just kind of uh, get you up to speed on what the requirement is. You know, what do most other realtors do? How do they act? What should you be asking for? Uh, when you ask for repairs, or what are some things that you shouldn't accept if you get an offer that says something, that says something in particular that might back you up into a corner if you're a listing agent. Um, these are important questions, and so I don't expect for any of you. One thing I learned about working around realtors is that you all have a lot on your plate, and you have to know a ton of local laws. There's so much guidelines. It, it was honestly shocking to me once I realized how much you – all have to know. And so I don't expect you to be an expert on sewers. Just keep my number and then just give me a call. Hey, I have this address. What should I know about? It? And then I'll figure it no, out. No, man, all we do we'll is open doors. That's it, right? <laughs> that's what everyone that's all thinks. We do. So, yeah, that's so much more than that. Golly, you know, so much more than that. Yeah. Well, it's knowing all these local ordinances. You know, you have to be uh, have some experience in the area you're working too, because if you come from out of the area, you're not going to know some of these things. And, uh, you know, your clients are going to pay the price, unfortunately. And and you know what? And it's not to pick on anybody, but I'll pick on somebody. So this can go ahead and go into the outtakes. But Los Angeles, Los Angeles realtors, because it's so close in proximity, but they don't understand our local laws. So they come in here, they negotiate, and then it's kind of like then they're at a loss. They're like, oh, wait, what do you mean? This is what I have to do. I'm very surprised about this or they didn't know. And sometimes people mm -hmm. will have like a vacation home or something. And now they're the listing agent. And now they're in the contingency period, like day 10 of a 14 day contingency. And now they're calling for a sewer lateral inspection. And they're going like, I had no idea this was even required. And all mm. of a sudden now everybody's under the gun. It puts everybody into a tight schedule. And, uh, and, and usually I see this from Los Angeles realtors because they're the ones who are mostly out of the area but they still mm -hmm. do quite a bit of business up here. Did you hear that guys that you need to use a local realtor? Make sure to, to call me. Remember to call me. 
so uh, important. So, it's those little things that you don't realize. Yeah. Local. No, it, it is. It, it, it is. Really I mean, I've, uh, I've had some clients where we, you know, want to buy properties in other areas and, you know, sometimes they don't want me to refer them out and man, it's, it's, uh, the whole new ball game working in an area that you have no clue about. It's uh, it takes, it's definitely a learning curve. So I'm, and then uh, not only that, when you're working with an out of the area realtor, from my experience, this is just my own personal thing. Once again, put it in the outtakes if you like, but it's almost like you're not the priority because they have their clients in their, in their driving area. And now you're representing somebody two hours away in really bad traffic. And all of a sudden, are you really going to be that concerned about them? From my experience, that just hasn't been the case. It's great if it happens, but a local realtor brings the knowledge. It brings the, it brings the attention. Um, help me out on wording here. What, like, you know, when you, this, um, professionalism, how about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Professionalism, the level of service that you get from just having a local realtor. It's, it's so important. It does make a difference. I, I definitely agree, ma'am. I definitely agree. So let me ask you this. So if you're a buyer, you're buying a property in Ventura County, when should you be getting a sewer lateral inspection? Like on, on no matter what, on every transaction, I know, of course, you know, you want more ordered, right? Get you more business. But, you know, like mm -hmm. when does it make sense to order one and when do you probably not need one? So I would go back to your comfort level and decide on what, at the end of the day, you got to come back to why are you ordering a sewer lateral inspection, you know, or building, uh, what, what I tell, because the key word that I took out of that, if you're the buyer. And so if you're the buyer, why do you order inspections? And the reason why is to protect your investment. At the end of the day, that's what it is. Now, if you feel, if your perception is, is that you don't really care about sewer and drain, or let's say that your more your priority is more concerned about let's say the property and not actually living in the property. In other words, maybe you want to turn it into investment. Let's say you were going to do a whole remodel on it. Okay, and you were just going to redo the pipes anyway. Yeah, don't order one. But let's say that you were actually planning on moving in, and the home is um, probably pre eighties. I would probably say you should definitely have one being done. So as the, as the buyer, as the agent representing the buyer, what's really important is, is that how do you protect your client the best? And the best way to do it is to talk to your client and have your buyer pay for the inspection because that means I'm working for you. And so what that would entail is, is that now, so this is for Ventura property, not Ventura County, but Ventura property. So when you call me, you say, Ben, I have this Ventura inspection, I'm representing the buyer, and I want you to do a building drain and lateral inspection. So I'm looking under the building and I'm looking out in the lateral. I will still provide that PSL report and the seller, this way the seller doesn't have to do it. But now I'm also looking under the building drain, okay? I would also recommend that for just out of uh, Ventura area, Ventura County. Just so then this way, you also know what's underneath of the building. And the reason why I recommend to do it this way, if the seller hires me to do the inspection and then the buyer says, hey, while you're there, can you also inspect the pipe under the house? There's a conflict of interest to do it now for free. And so now it becomes a thing where it's like, look, I'm happy to do that, but I got to charge you for the inspection. It's like I have to double charge because now I have two different clients and right. the buyer's agent is trying to piggyback off of that. There's nothing that they're trying to do nefariously or it's, it's not like they're trying to get over, but I just don't think that they understand what they're doing. It's almost like they're trying to piggyback off of somebody else's payment. So I would always recommend to just to protect your own investment. The buyer orders the inspection and what they need to be asking for is a building drain and sewer lateral inspection. Not a lateral a building inspection. and sewer lateral inspection. That's yeah, that's good to know, important. man. So, so the building drain part, that's not covered in a home inspection? Often it's not. So there are some home. So if let's say there's a uh, crawl space, so some areas like in Midtown, 
some areas off of the avenue, there is a crawl space, but there's also mm -hmm. a really good amount of Ventura that doesn't have crawl spaces. So that never gets inspected at all. And not all home inspectors will crawl underneath of the house. Um, so this is one of these things that you really have to take a look at and consider. What I have seen on home inspections is they'll run the water, right? They'll run all of the sinks, they'll run the bathtub, and uh, sometimes it'll start to back up. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've seen where they say, you know, the, 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 the drains are draining slowly, you know, recommend further investigation. Right. But that doesn't and, necessarily mean there's an issue with the, the sewer pipes, right? It could be the drains. Oh, 100%. Yeah, 100%. And here's another thing is, is that, and this is where I go back to, you have to understand what you're buying. And so oftentimes uh, what I see in Ventura, and this is Ventura City, I see a lot of homes that are built with cast iron pipe underneath of the house. Everything drains. But the problem with the cast iron pipe is, is that as a limitation of the sewer inspection cameras, I can only see the inside of the pipe. I can't tell you how thick it is, I can't tell you how much pipe is remaining. All I can tell you mm. is this is what it looks like from the inside. So now, what if that pipe looks good from the inside, but it's also paper thin? And this is real. If you ever know of anybody with an old car, you know, what would happen is, is what happens on the fenders um, around the wheel well. It, you start to get the rust bubbles. You know, we, we had right. an old car growing up. You know, you wash the car and then that rust bubble, and then you go ahead and you wash it. The rust bubble pops and there's nothing underneath. It's just a hole now. Okay, that was our family car. So the point of it And that is, can happen with the cast iron pipes. Yes, that yes, that's the thank you. That's the point I'm alluding to. So that's where I often tell people is like, look, you need to be aware you have cast iron pipe. And as of right now, it's functional, everything is draining, but I still recommend that you do get an estimate so you understand how much does it cost to get repaired or replaced and what actually needs to take, what needs to happen? What's the job scope? Because it is very unsettling if you're unfamiliar with that process, because essentially it could be your new home and it looks like it has open heart surgery. You walk inside, the floor is saw cut, there's dirt in your living room or your kitchen and you're freaking out and you're going, oh my gosh, what is all this? And it makes you hate your home that you just bought. But what if you were already prepared for that? What if you were told, hey, I need to have a, you know, I have cast iron pipe and I might have to have it replaced. Let's say you get an estimate for $20,000, right? But you were like, and then let's say in a couple of years, it actually does need to be replaced. And you're like, hmm, okay. You know what? I already knew that. I already knew what was involved. I already had a plumber picked out for it. It's not such a big deal. And I'm already kind of prepared. But what happens if now nothing flushes and it's the cast iron pipe under your house and the first plumber you called because he's the one who answered the phone or had the biggest ad in the yellow pages is now telling you, Hey, it all has to get fixed for $20,000. And now you're trying to make a rush to decision. Think about those two scenarios. One of them can be approached with some calm and some reason. And the other one is just like, you're going, your, your mood is elevating to the highest degree, and who are you gonna hate at during that time is the realtor who who sold you the home because they didn't tell you about it. The reason that why I know that is because I'm, and, and the reason why I know that is because I've been in that room when that pipe has been found to be bad, and I've been in the room and the realtor is going, um, uh, uh, you know, and the homeowner is going, why didn't you tell me this? And it is so uncomfortable. I don't want to hear that. No one wins when something like that happens. It's a terrible situation. Um, now, going back to that, let's say it is a $20,000 estimate of repair, right? But now let's say your client can look at it. You know, you're still in the contingency period and your client says, hey, $20,000. If we had to come up with $20,000, could we do that as an emergency fund? And you say, no, we'd be tapped out. You know, that would just put us over the edge. That's when you as the realtor now have what is like your true operating cost. Um, and now you can come back to them and say, look, maybe an older 1960s home, maybe that's not for you because 
1960s, every single house is going to be like this. But maybe we should be looking at a condo. A little bit less money, a little bit pipes, a little bit newer, a little bit less maintenance. Or what if your client says $20,000 to have it all repaired? Okay, yeah, we can do that. We could save that for maybe a couple of years or something like that. Yeah, and at least this way they know about it. And then this way you could all have a good feeling moving forward that everything was disclosed and nothing was hidden simply because people didn't know the right questions to ask. No, that's a lot of good really, info, man. Yeah. I don't even I'm, remember I'm, your I'm original notes question. Myself. I just started talking. No, yeah. but no, that that's awesome. That's good to know. And, and you know, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's scary, you know, because we don't always get sewer inspections. I mean, especially I could think of, you know, we get, the home inspection, we get a termite inspection, but it's not it's not on every transaction that, uh, you know, we're calling for the sewer, you know, on the buy or the sell side. So uh, that's something to think about, something to definitely keep in, in your mind. Um, you know, we're going to start uh, pushing, the, pushing the clients to do more sewer inspections, Ben. Yeah. And then, you know what, Jason, this is a big reason why I stopped doing the repairs the full on repair, you know, the big replacements. And the thing is, is that because I work for so many buyers, I might tell someone, yeah, hey, you have cast iron pipe. And I could see these cracks coming in through cast iron pipe. And I could see the insects crawling in and out of the pipe. But the pipe <laughs> is still functional. The waste is still flowing, right? But I still recommend for it to be replaced. The seller, the listing agent calls me up and says, hey, we flush our toilets just fine. So how much are you going to you know, how much are you going to make by that recommendation? And I told them nothing. I don't make a dime because I was just there to do the inspection. This is the, and, and all of a sudden now they're like on, oh, okay. And it's like, yeah. it, just, it, it just totally brought everyone back to center. Let's just focus on the pipe. And there was nothing where I was trying to like make a mountain out of a molehill or try to say, right. hey, this is it. But I'm such a nice guy. I'll give you an estimate for the repair, right? Yeah. I don't. No, do he just that. wants the business. That's it. And this is also another reason why I incorporated my drain cleaning with the inspection fee. So if the pipe needs to be cleaned, as long as I can do it safely from my access point, and it's not too many turns or anything like that that will prohibit my my uh, my drain cleaning uh, equipment to get through. I clean the pipe at the same time and, and it's done at no additional fee. But, you know, uh, and you haven't asked this question yet, though, but just to lead into it, because uh, it may come up. This is the reason why I charge what I charge, because I am at the higher end of scale for the inspections. And it's because I'm priced. Um, my business model is for the inspections. It's not for the repairs. I don't make any money off of repairs. And so that's a big difference. That's why sometimes you see some companies and they charge an extremely low price for the inspections. And it's because they don't make money off of the inspection. They make money off of the repairs. It yeah, doesn't mean that for some reason, those guys always call out a replacement, right? <laughs> it benefit, well, I'm not, oh, I don't ever want to talk bad about somebody that maybe doesn't deserve it, right? But at the end of the day, they're the ones who do stand to profit if something is bad. So, and think about this, if you were the realtor and you got that report that said something is bad, but your client's the one having to pay for it. Now imagine you're the listing agent. And now let's say that somebody goes ahead and, you know, and, and your, your clients are flushing everything just fine. But then the plumber says, yeah, we recommend for this pipe to be replaced now. And it's going to cost seven, $10,000. You're going did it really have to be replaced or is the, it, you know, it just causes so much doubt. An example of that, especially here in Ventura, like in the bird track, they have a lot of Orangeburg pipe, which is made out of tar paper. And this is the pipe that actually sewer pipe that collapses. And this is that often has to get replaced. But I inspect so much Orangeburg pipe that has collapsed, but it's still functional. It's kind of like a 40 year old body, you know, yeah, we're older and our knees are hurting and our back doesn't feel the same and we got a bum shoulder that, that gets worse when the weather changes, but it's still functional, right? But right. wouldn't you like to know what you're getting? 
And so this is one of those things where that Orangeburg pipe, it's like you really need to kind of see it and be aware of what you're getting. And um, isn't your uh, it, if you got a leak in your pipe, it, doesn't your your grass and your just get greener and all your trees just <laughs> grow faster? <laughs> so it can, but the problem right. is, is so usually it's anywhere from usually three to five foot deep. And so it happens a lot with trees. And the trees that I'm talking about oftentimes are the trees that belong to the city because they're the, in the area of the parkway, which is between the curb and the sidewalk. So everyone's mm -hmm. always like, well, that's a city tree. And it's like, yeah, that's the city tree, but that's your pipe. And it's your responsibility in the city. I'm not a city employee, so I can't. But from based off of conversations in the past, the way that they treat it is, is that if your pipe wasn't defective, the roots from our tree wouldn't be able to grow into the pipe. The one, the one area, the one city that's a, that is a little bit different is Oxnard. I've seen Oxnard take responsibility of roots in the sewer line, but into the homeowner sewer line, but it has to be under the drip line of the tree. And so mm. if, if the roots, and, and it has to be documented in such a way that they can go, okay, yeah, we know this is where the blockage was. This is where it's caused. And we'll, you know, and if it was under the drip line of the tree, we'll take care of it. But otherwise, the cities and local areas say, nope, it doesn't matter. It's the homeowner's responsibility all the way to the city connection, mm. which is usually in the middle of the street. I sold a property once and I, uh, me and the buyer were thinking like, man, the grass is so luscious. It's so, so green. They did such a great job. And it comes to find out we got a leaky septic. <laughs> and that's that's the reason why the grass it. looks so good yeah so most people do not understand the how expensive septic is and because sometimes in this area you can't replace your septic tank with another septic tank instead you actually have to connect once that septic tank goes bad you have to connect to the city sewer and that mm, i didn't know that. No, i'm talking about yeah, I'm talking about twenty, thirty thousand dollars sometimes, and yeah, usually it depends on permit fees. Yep, ADUs, you know, um, is another one. So if you have a house, and you know, because they passed where you can have an ADU and they opened it up, right? But the problem with it is, is that local city, local city sewer departments say, well, that's a second dwelling, so that's an additional load on our sewer system, so you have to pay for that. So now that could be an additional $16,000 just in permit fees. I'm talking about just in the paperwork, that's $16,000. That's not even, you know, any work done. So this is why it's so important for you to know what you're, what's involved up front. And it's not I, just I've seen a bill for like 60 grand. Wow, that's probably the highest number I've seen. No, actually, no, I have heard, uh, I had one in Camarillo and it was going across uh, three lanes of traffic on Las Posas. And that one was in the 60s to get that entire pipe replaced. Um, that one, I do remember that pretty clearly because that was a big yeah. deal right there. So, so uh, that yeah, that, that could be really expensive. So it's very important. Paul, Ben, make sure you're getting the sewer lateral inspection and also inspecting the building drainage system okay very important it could be very expensive repair uh, i'm curious leave me in the comments let me know did you get your sewer inspected when you bought your house curious to know how many people are actually getting these sewer inspections and uh, I, I know myself will definitely be ordering more sewer inspections in the future man thank you for all this good info uh was there anything else uh you, you wanted to add I one big thing and this is just like a personal this just kind of goes back to personal values. This is that for myself, is that I, whenever I talk to a service provider, the value system that I have is I always go off of, I want to deal with somebody who I could trust. And that's what I found to be the best way to handle business. And it also goes into your uh, industry as well. You want to have a realtor you could trust. You want to be able to trust your mortgage lender. Every, you know, your escrow, your title, and it's no different when it comes to your sewer inspector. But what is the number one question when you call for a sewer inspection? How much does it cost? 
How much does it cost? And that is probably the last question that you should ever ask. You know, um, you should be asking things like, are you familiar with this process? How do I get the results of this? Do you do the repairs? What if a repair is needed? These are a lot of the questions that should be getting asked. But think about this. A house here in Ventura, um, I'll put you on the spot here, Jason. What's the average price of a house here in Ventura City? Now it's like eight, nine hundred. So uh, over three quarters of a million dollars, right? And you're going mm -hmm. to make a decision of something based on that could potentially be that tens of thousands of dollars. And you're, and if you're a realtor, you're actually thinking you're protecting the client by negotiating or choosing somebody over a hundred bucks on their sewer inspection. Well, this other company charges a hundred dollars less. So I'm going to go with them. Are you really protecting your client with that? And if you are, and if that's what your value system is, I'll be the first to tell you, I'm not your sewer inspector. Um, <laughs> nobody, nobody hires me because of my price. They definitely don't hire me because of my sense of humor. You know, I'll tell you that. <laughs> they hired me. Well, you're not expensive, like man. You're me. not expensive. I don't think. I think it's well worth it. You know, and uh, it, it it's definitely pays for itself. It's only like three, four hundred bucks or something like that, right? Three fifty for my inspections. Three fifty, yeah. yeah. Three fifty, cake, man. Yeah, that's not expensive yeah. at all. I mean, a property inspection um, is like five, six. It's like six hundred dollars now, and um, you know, a termite inspection. There's another hundred. So yeah, you know, if, if you're a buyer, plan on spending around a thousand dollars for inspections because you know we want to get that sewer too, just so we can be safe. And that's going to run you about a thousand bucks. Non-refundable either. So if you cancel, you know, you can't get that money back. But it's definitely worth and getting also, inspections to get you some peace of mind. And not just that, but it's also and, and if it doesn't work out this way, that's great. But also, if you spend a hundred dollars on getting a good quality sewer inspection where you have some clarity, visual clarity on what's on the screen, and the pipe is getting cleaned, and you can see, hey, are we negotiating because there are roots in the line? Or were those roots covering a big break or big broken sewer pipe, right? A lot of mm -hmm. times you can go ahead and get that money um, negotiate during the negotiation process. Doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes I inspect the sewer lines and everything is just fine. And that's great when that happens. But wouldn't you like to know that, hey, we have some serious issues. We're informed of them and we're in a better position to negotiate because we had a better quality inspection done. But when I'm representing the buyers, a lot of times uh, I'm throwing the sewer lateral on uh, on the contract. I'm asking for the sewer to be inspected um, by the seller, you know. And I'm and uh, like on the last one you did for me, I specified that they hired you uh, to do the inspection. So worked out. Oh, right, and that's something that I do often as well. Yeah. If there are any questions, nice. there's always the what ifs, and I actually teach a class on this, and so we're not going to do that right now. OK, but I teach a class and it's geared towards Realtors, clearing up the myths on our sewer inspections required here in Ventura. And everyone who's attended my class, I could definitely say I can notice the trend like they are just up to date on sewer inspections. They well, I need it. to take that class. Yeah. I didn't know you had a class. Send me that info. It's basically it's up, whatever man. you want. Just talk to your fellow Realtors, get together. We'll do lunch. And uh, it's just a class where I run you through some stuff. Oh, and okay. Just in person. Show you. person, we could talk. I could show you things. I could show you email transactions between myself and the city of Ventura, things like that. And it clears it up. So then that way, when another realtor is telling you like, no, you have to get the sewer line fixed within six months or you can't sell the home, you could tell them to, no, I'm sorry, but you just have the wrong information. And, and you could push back and, and actually protect your client the right way. No, I love so, it. No, you're, like you're, Just you're great, man. Just come talk to me if there are questions. No, I am. I definitely yeah. am. And, um, you know, you got to gotta reach out to Ben. Ben's awesome. Uh, he, he really knows his shit, okay. right? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, you got you to gotta see one of his inspections. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, make, make sure it's not before lunch, though, because, you know, he sends, he sends you a link for a video and you are watching the camera uh, going down the sewer. So it's, it's very interesting seeing the bugs and all the stuff in there. 
It's an interesting experience, but it's very educational, very informative. Thank you so much, Ben, for joining us. You're awesome. How do people get a hold of you in order to order an inspection? Or, or if they have any questions, what's the, what's the best way? What's your contact number? The best way to reach me is 805-758-5901. Uh, now, one thing I do want you to be aware of is that whenever um, I work, I do turn off my phone. And so I may not pick it up. You can leave a text message. I will call you back. Uh, sometimes it might be later that night, but I always make it a point to call you back the same day. Uh, and before you do call, something I would encourage you to do, especially if you're a realtor, look up the name of my company, From Sinks to Sewers. Look me up online. Talk to your fellow realtors in a private setting. Hey, do you know who Ben Cohn is from Sinks to Sewers? Is he, is he your go-to sewer inspector? Should I be using somebody else? And that way you could just protect, at the end of the day, this is about protecting your client. And I think the best way is to get a recommendation from somebody who's in your industry as you know. So that's something that I would encourage you. 805 well, well, 758 I could definitely vouch for you. You've done a ton of inspections. You are my go-to sewer inspector guy. And uh, you know I wouldn't go with anyone else. So. If you're watching you. this, give Ben a call. He's going to do a great job. He offers great service. He always gets back to me right away. And um, nothing but great things to say about you, Ben. Thank you so much again for, for joining us. And um, I look forward to doing more business with you in the future, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Jason, thank you so much for having me. It's been great. All right, man. Take care. If you guys found some information from this video, please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Help me get this channel going and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Have a good day.